everyone. So in this video, I'm going to be showing you a couple of different methods of how I create a rose quartz nail. So I've got three examples here um, using a couple of different techniques, but I'm going to show you two of those today. The first one that I'm going to be showing you is using your magpie inkies um, and the, met the method that I've used to achieve the finished results. And then the second method will be with um, just shellac polish and freehand line work. So obviously you can use whatever gel polish you have. So let's get started then. So depending on what system that you have or the system that you use, uh, you will need to find a sort of sheer pink um, to apply two coats. So I'm actually going to use a couple of different ones here. So to begin with, I'm going to use Bow. And the reason I'm using that is because it's, it's quite a nice translucent pink, but it's also got a bit of a shimmer to it as well but it's, it's quite a, a sort of sheer pink, which is nice so that you'll be able to see sort of like the white uh, detail that you're gonna put in underneath. And the second one is bokeh. For a similar reason, it's a very, very sheer pink, which is what you're looking for when you're trying to achieve a rose quartz. Obviously, if you haven't got any colors that are, are like a nice sheer pink like that or a sort of more natural sort of nude pink, then you could always go for the lightest pink that you have and then add a little bit of um, base coat or a little bit of top coat to it to just sort of thin that out a little bit and disperse it so it kind of waters it down a little bit. So what you need to do is to apply two coats first of all. So I've got two pop sticks here and I'm gonna show you one method using the inkies on one and then the other method using the shellac, just doing freehand uh, detail work on the other one. So what you would need to do is you would need to apply two coats of your chosen colour and cure in the lamp. And then on the second coat for your Magpie Beauty one, we're going to um, remove the tacky inhibition layer. OK, so I am just going to prep both of my pop sticks just so that they're both going in the lamp at the same time. So again, these are quite long tips that I'm using here and you will see that these aren't clear tips so they are already like an ivory colour underneath. So depending on what pop stick you use in, it will have a difference slightly to what you're um, trying to achieve. Not, not too much but obviously if it's a clear one then it's obviously going to be more translucent. Whereas I find, I always tend to go for the ivory ones just purely because um, your natural nail has an undertone to it. You know, they're not completely clear. So I always tend to go for the ivory ones because I find that they're more true to, true to life. Okay, so they're going to go into the lamp. Okay, so they've both had two coats now. So you can see this one here is your bow. It's slightly darker in colour than this one here, which is your bouquet, which is why I've used these two colours so that you can see a comparison between the two. So what you'd need to do after you've done your second coat, you will need to, um, on this one, remove your inhibition layer if you're using this one for your inkies because the inkies generally tend to need like a, a smooth rather than a shiny tacky base layer they do need to have a smooth um surface to sort of work on so we're going to go over and just remove that inhibition layer okay and this one here i'm just going to pop to the side because that's the technique that i'll show you afterwards so <clears throat> just make sure there's no fluff stuck the only thing when you remove the inhibition layer sometimes you leave a little bit of uh, fluff on your pop sticks which obviously you don't want okay so that's prepped and ready so what i always tend to do is come in with my palette so i've got something to work off there just make sure there's no fluff on that palette and then you're gonna come in with your Magpie Inky. So I'm using the white here. This does tend to be quite like a, th not, not a thick consistency, but you, you get quite a lot on there. So you do need to really drain that brush to try and get as much of it off as you can. Um, because otherwise when you do come to use it, you'll end up applying too much to the nail. And then what you wanna do is you wanna start in the top corner 
once you're happy that you've removed all the excess product you need to start off in the top corner and you basically just need to bring your so i've removed too much now so obviously you want to remove enough but you just want to be zigzagging down almost so from one side You need to go back in, go back in, just try and drain off as much as you can because you want to be working. And what this will do is it will start to build the layers. On the pop stick. So you'll see some layers will be thicker. Some layers will be deeper in colour. Okay. Okay. Allow the inky to dry. With a rose quartz nail or any of the crystal nails, the idea is to create depth um, and sort of layering because in a crystal, you know, there's quite a bit of depth to it. There's different layers that run through it. So this is quite a quick and easy process, to be quite honest with you, because it's just your two coats, a little bit of your inky. Now, if you looked at that and thought, mm, there's too much, too much on there, you can always go back in with your clear inky, if you've got it. Or if you wanted to, you could decant some of your disperse into a little dappen dish, which is what I tend to find works quite well, because you've got a little bit more control over that. And then with a brush, I just use one that's got like a slight angle to it. And then have your bit of kitchen, your cotton pad there just to blot off some of it. And then what I tend to do is I will go back over where I just want to disperse it that little bit. Because, you know, when you are doing a rose quartz, you do want to have a little bit of the pink sort of coming through as well you want like I say it's all about the depth and what that will do is that will just disperse some of the white that you've just put in take a bit from that which I like to just because I think it adds to the effect now you can leave that as it is if you want to or you can just because you are going to be coming back over with your sheer pink again and so the idea is you will see some of that but if you want to just pick up some more white in places then you can obviously go in with a little bit more white so I'll just show you on these two here I've used two different bases so I've used your uh, used the bow on this one and then I've used the, bo uh, the bouquet on this one and I've come in with the inkies as you can see on these and then I've just gone in a little bit darker in places in some of the white just so that you can really pick that up when you come over with your other colour so I do like to just uh, add a little bit more depth to mine and you can either go back over with your inky again if you want to or what you can do is you can come in with your shellac polish. I'll just show you, I'll just pop a little bit. So I'm just using my cream puff there. And then you can use your, I'm using my D2 Lacente brush and you can just come in and just pick up it on some of these, just in some places, just really faintly. Just where it is, just on the edges of these, as you would if it was on a quartz. Because what that will do is it will just highlight some of the areas. And again, create that little bit more depth to the design. It's not going to be perfect in, in terms of where you're placing it or anything like that, because if you were to look at a, a crystal or a quartz you know there is no sort of rhyme or reason to where it is and then what I would do again is using 
your brush and a little bit of disperse just come in just to feather it out just a little bit because obviously you don't want it to stand out too harshly it's a really subtle easy technique and if you still find that there's still a little bit too much on your brush or it's too white in places then just go back in again a little bit with some disperse blot it on your cotton pad and then just come back in and just disperse it out and there you've created some nice depth there so what i'm going to do i'm going to just cure that because i have put a little bit of the cnd on that so i am going to have to cure that before i put the next coat on so i'll do that now i'm going to now come back in over the top of this design with a really thin coat of the colour and again if you wanted to do this so that it was more sheer you could add some top coat or base coat to that. I want a nice pinky sort of tone here so I'm going to come in with my bow. Okay so you will still see the design underneath but obviously you've got that sort of pink over the top, which is, if you compare a rose quartz stone, you'll see that obviously in places there's a lot of depth and dimension to that. Okay, so that's cured in the lamp. So you will now have a tacky inhibition layer there. So if you do want to come in with sort of any flakes or if you want to use any foil around the edges, you can do. So for the purpose of this video I am just going to show you with a couple of flakes on this particular one so I always just get a little brush and then just pick up and then you can place them where you want them then and again this just adds a little bit more depth to the design you don't have to do this you can leave the design as it is a nice little finishing touch I tend to like to place it sort of around the edges but you can pop it wherever you want okay so you will need to obviously once you've applied the flakes what you do need to do is make sure those flakes aren't raised up so that when you put your top coat on there's not like a rough edge so what you do need to do is just to make sure those flakes are completely flat against that inhibition layer you're not going to ruin your design by doing it but obviously you do need to make sure that they are pressed into so it's completely flat so that when you come to pop your top coat on they're not going to be raised up so once you're you've, you're happy with that you would then pop your top coat on and then that's that design completed so for your second method you've already done your two applications of your color so this is the one that i've used that okay for and then what you're going to do using your white so I again I've used my cream puff you can use whatever white you'd like uh, pop a little bit onto your palette and with your again I'm using my d2 brush from Lacente I'm going to then come in and I'm going to use the brush to create some fine lines so what you need to do is again think about how, like how you want your lines to be where you want them I generally tend to start at the top and sort of drag down from one side and then come across from another. And then once you've done that, before you cure it, similar process to what I've just shown you on the other one, you would then Use a bit of disperse in a dappen dish, blot the excess, and then you're going to disperse that colour. I tend to find sort of the messier you are, the more sort of realistic it looks, to be honest, because with you dispersing it through, it kind of creates that sort of cloudy look that you would get on a crystal on your rose quartz if you feel like you want to add some more go in and pop some more in okay 
Okay, once you're happy with that, you pop that in the lamp and cure. Okay, so that's cured. But because what I want to do is create some more depth and some more layering, I am actually going to go back in and I'm going to come over in a different place now. With the white. And again, you can add as much or as little as you want. I'm just going to disperse some of this, not too much because I want that sort of deeper white there to add, to create that more depth. You just need to have a play around really and see what works for you. Because if you were to look at a rose quartz, every crystal is going to be different. They're not all going to look the same. So, Okay, so that's had an, another cure. And then what you're going to do, you can either leave it like that if you wanted to, or I'm going to come in and just put another coat of bouquet on a very light coat and again if you wanted to you could mix that with your top coat to sort of disperse it a little bit and make it a little bit more translucent and then you would go in and cure that when you're happy and again it just creates that little bit more depth to the design so that has now cured. So you've now got a sticky inhibition layer on there. So if you wanted to, you can now come in like the last time with you with your flakes. But what I'm going to do on this one, so it's similar to this one over here, I've actually got some rose foil from Nail Stamping Queen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to use, so I've already uh, cut a bit off and then kind of scrunched it up a little bit. And then I'm going to use that inhibition layer and I'm going to place the foil just around the edges just to pick up around them edges just to give the design something a little bit different it doesn't have to be neat you just want it to sort of create the edge in there and it just adds another little bit of dimension and depth to your design then. Okay, and so then once you've done that, you can then top coat that and that's finished. Another method that you can do if you wanna kind of create some lines coming off this with the rose quartz, you can obviously put your foil gel, cure it, and then apply the foil on top. But for this video, I just wanted to just add a little bit of depth to the edges. So that doesn't need to be cured because obviously you've already cured that layer underneath and then uh, burnished the foil into the sticky layer. So you would then apply your top coat and then that, that's that one done as well. So there are the two designs completed. And so you can see you've got your two slightly different colours, uh, slightly different tones of pink and then you've got your two different methods. So you've got your one here using your magpie inkies and then I've just gone over in a little bit more just to add a little bit of sort of like depth, a bit more fine detail with the white or you've got this one here where if you haven't got any inkies you can go ahead and use your white and place it through with your fine detailer and then just disperse it out a little bit with your uh, IPA, your disperse, um, and it has a similar sort of effect, but obviously I've chosen two different color, translucent colors there so that you've got an idea. And then we've come in with the foil and we've come in with your flakes. Um, both really effective, really simple, really quick, really easy designs to do. You could actually do them on a full set or you could just do them on a couple of accent fingers and it actually wouldn't take you too much longer to do that. So have a little play around, see what you like best. Tag me in your creations uh, at nails by Charlotte underscore Ed so I can see how you've got on and I hope it's helped you. And if it has, please do, do subscribe and let me know in the comments below. Thanks again, guys. Bye. Bye.